red side. Same first four bands so far. We've got Gragas Cassiopeia for EDG and ID go with the Annie Thresh, but will there be adaptation? Nunu, interestingly, banned by EDG on the blue side. Banned on blue. Of course, Kakao has been playing this champion. Have to think they were angling for a Lulu pick away. That's the only champion they haven't banned because, of course, we're on the red side. Didn't want to see IG pick up Lulu. Looking for Lulu for themselves, but not to be. Yeah, and they IG, of course, smartly ban away. The Lulu is their last one as Koro briefly flashes Yasuo. And are going to go through a couple of other champions. I wonder after that game how EDG feel. Do they want to go more aggressive? Do they feel comfortable? EDG, to me, never seem to do the same thing twice. So be interested to see how they mix it up. They do like being consistent, at least, with their team comps. But they've shown a lot of flexibility in the regular season and the playoffs as well. And that's kind of the crazy thing about Game 1, just to dwell on it a bit longer, is that Jinx Nunu, they've shown that multiple times during the LPL. They always had the same game plan, much similar to their Corky play. It's about rotating and taking those turrets. So it's just surprising that the team of adjustments, IG, looked to have no answer in that game in particular. Perhaps they were banking on Azir going even or better on the lane and having the pressure to be able to force things. But against LeBlanc and all her scary burst potential, they seeded so many advantages that soon it was the game. Yeah, they really just felt too scared of Pawn, I have to say, after his solo kill. But EDG do take away the Rexa there. Kikau had it in the last game. We'll see what Clear Love can get done with it here. But they'll pick away some very 5.6 champions here. Sejuani Jana are IG's first two. Disengage and potentially two disengaged champions. We've actually seen one of the most effective uses of Sejuani was against the Karthus of all things, was actually using the Glacial Prison to get a pick on the Karthus, ensure that he didn't die near the enemy team, and just using that uh, Glacial Prison for a one and a half seconds of disengage so they can use more priority targets. So don't be fooled by this Sejuani pick. There's not necessarily committing to a very hard engaged lineup. Yeah, and I think this almost forces EDG to pick now, which they do lock in here. Can't give IG Nas to Adwani, especially given how much the tie loves to play the champion, and they'll pick up Nautilus for Mako as well. I mean, Mako's only played one game of support Nautilus, and that was back in week 10, so it's erred away from that champion. Never going to have the Annie available, it feels like. That's the seventh game in a row in the playoffs that it's been banned against him. Nautilus probably better as a defensive support, but always has offensive options, specifically if paired with the likes of a Callista, which might be available. Yeah, maybe. Here we'll have to see what EDG want here. IG, of course, always have to talk about Callista when we look at their picks. They take it quite often here, seem to have a pretty high priority on the champion. You saw Kid flash the Jinx. I think he was thinking about taking it away from death, but IG, going to go back to basics a little bit here. Callista once again for Kid, and Zatai is going to get his Aurelia once more. And even if Deft isn't a noted Callista player, can of course play that champion, does have wins with it. Callista Nord is one of the most terrifying lanes in the league, pastry time, as with that duo, Imp, yeah, Imp and BYL yesterday completely wrecked OMG with just so many CCs and you know the fates call Nautilus in the middle of a fight knocking up into multiple further CCs but Callista's been locked in Urgot's still available awkwardly and it's going to be locked yeah Urgot's locked in so Nautilus Urgot there as Cassidy comes in for Pawn blind pick there into the IG lineup. I mean, this is the sort of thing that Pawn will look to do. Remember, he must be feeling on Cloud9 after that amazing carry performance in Game 5 against World Elite. I don't like the lineup that comes through for EDG, though. Even though they have laning strength, there's literally no wave clear coming through from this team. Maybe the very short-ranged wave clear of a late-game Cassidy, but the wave clear is super poor. So this team only goes one way, and the Siege is not fantastic either. It's almost melee range. No, it's going to be big objective control here for EDG. It's their primary method of taking over this game, and I agree with you. The wave clear, especially when it comes to defensive wave clear, getting people out from under your turrets is a problem, but we're going to have rookie answers with Orianna. I love the Orianna. Ariana pick just because so many of these champions, the longest range champions are the likes of uh, Nar and the Urgot, you know, 450, 425 range coming through from the Urgot. So many short range champions, so many people who are going to be fighting basically on top of the tank line. It's not going to be a Caitlyn and then a tank line, two, 300 units in front of it. These, these, these champions are all going to be fighting on top of each other. You can just see the potential for a massive shockwave coming through from Rookie. To their credit, though, EDG, very tanky there as well, especially against magic damage with the Cassidy and helping out. So we've seen EDG do this game one from their quarterfinal against World Elite comes to mind, but we'll go through the lineups now as well. Narvas really we've started to see this quite a bit more into tie. Look, very good in Aurelia when he had it last. It's not just any Nar, it's Koro's Nar. Undefeated all time on Nar. 11-0 on the season. 
Aurelia undefeated, but in only one game coming through. Remember, he's picking Knight. Did he pick Knight into Aurelia or counter pick? I can't actually recall, but regardless, Laney matchup is fairly standard for Knight. First few levels going to be just fine. Aurelia always finds a way to scale away. Yeah, the Urgot Callisto again. The Leng, we almost never seem to see 2v2. Wonderful see it today in this particular game. And of course, Mako on the Nautilus here because uh, his giant has been stolen away by Kitties as we do start the game off with a pause. But again, shouldn't be too much longer. And just to remind you, it was the, the counter pick Aurelia. So that's the choice of Zatai to go into that matchup. But we've seen his now before. It's quite competent. It looked fine in the last game, especially. But Kaoru, like you said, as far as Chinese Nars go, he's right on top of the pile. I had to track back. I didn't think Kaoru would play the Nars into earlier. That would have been very much a my comp needs me kind of choice rather than necessarily a smart laning option because it really does get away from Nars usually in that lane matchup. Well, we see the return of the likes of the Frozen Mallet. Nah, I guess it's possible. I, I don't know if Koro's played it just yet. I think he's done it once. He's done it once in that series earlier this week, of course. So that's definitely been the flavor of the month ever since Zion Spartan pulled it out a few months ago. It's great against the Hecarim in particular, against Aurelia. Not sure if it's the right choice. Building health in general, the best statistic against Aurelia. But I say that in a meta where we don't often see hit and style max first. We often see Equilibrium Strike even after the nurse. And then we see sometimes actually the Q, the Blade Surge, being at least a couple of points put in. There's not a lot of sustained damage trades anymore in the, in competitive league page time. It's usually about the burst trades. That's why we saw them move towards Equilibrium Strike. So it'll be interesting to see if they do focus on the Frozen Mallet. In general, EDG, strong team fighting comp. Team fight's gonna be so difficult to navigate against IG with the Rangers. You're right, they're gonna have to really fight around those objectives. IG, they picked up the first two dragons in game one. We're perilously close to dragon number five. EDG can't let that happen again. No, and they're gonna have to be much more proactive at taking over the early in mid game especially. And that's honestly what they've been so good at all season long. So we'll see if uh, Rek'Sai in particular makes a big change here for Clear Lovers. He's been very good at keeping control of land. I don't know if Clear Lovers necessarily an overly aggressive or overly defensive player. Once upon a time, we may have been able to criticize Clearlove for being overly defensive in particular, but seems to be quite well-rounded now. For me, Clearlove is happiest when he's controlling the pace of the game, whether that's massively ganking on Lee Sin, playing super fast, or just slowing things down with the Nunu. As long as Clearlove plays at his pace, he's happy, but Kakao, that's what he's also known for as well. And with this matchup, though, we expect him to definitely enter lanes very aggressively early. The early ganking from Rek'Sai is so strong with the uncleansable knockup coming through from the unborrow. Of course, giving Pawn a little bit of a hand in the mid lane because Orianna's a difficult matchup for Kassen, especially early. We'll take a lot of auto attack harass. May have to put multiple points into Q just for a bit of lane presence with the, maxing that Null Sphere at least early and then look into the Force Pulse because, of course, it's kind of a, a lose-lose situation is that you have to put some points into the, uh, the Null Sphere just for laning, but you need the Force Pulse, especially as the lanes goes on, for any hope of wave clear against what will eventually become instant wave clear from the Orianna. Yeah, I think the issue there is that if Pawn's tower in particular gets under fire and IG almost get a free turret just from the pressure Rookie can naturally create, that's so good for IG given what their comp does because we've said one of the biggest weaknesses looks to be sieging there, especially offensively. Wave is good on Orianna especially, so I like that change in any sort of seed situation. Or he's quite good, but the rest of the team maybe not quite as good in the situation, so they might struggle to take turrets in the mid game. And if Iduji can hold on to theirs, farm up the Cassidy and farm up the Nar, they've got plenty of good team fighting as well. Again, that first game where they played against World Elite, very similar looking composition for them. And if IG are looking to win this game though, base time, the 2v2 is definitely not manageable. The Urgot Nautilus has so much lane pressure. Similar to the Urgot Cannon that we saw Starhorn Royal Club running in the promo tournament, the lane pressure is massive. It don't quite have the same level one power with the poking from the shurikens, but still is very, very powerful. We've seen Callista lanes beat Urgot lanes. It's just been ma mainly around using that level two spike and looking for an all-in trade before Urgot gets enough levels to get his Noxion Corrosive Charge to look for those un- those, those trades just aren't sustainable for any AD carry. When you're taking trade damage at seven, 800 range after the lock-on, not really much return damage you can do. But level 2 in particular has been a very powerful point for the Callista. Rend and Pierce usually picked up at level 2 for those massive damage trades. If you don't take advantage of that, if you do opt into a 2v2, I mean, you're going to have to play around this bottom lane. That's such a difficult thing to do if a Callista's held back from a two-item spike. And as I said, we've seen a, quite a bit of this matchup, starting to see more of it now as well. I wonder what's going to happen. Will they swap away? Will Callista find an edge? Will Urgot finally take over the lane like we, 
I guess he's meant to. And EDG, they've swapped around as well before. Lots of level one questions, especially for the dual lanes. Yeah, no teleport smite this time. So I have to think EDG are looking for those 2v2 lanes. Can they get them? A lot of questions are going to be answered at level one. And it'll go a long way to deciding how the first 15 minutes go. EDG need an optimal first 15 minutes because their win conditions center mostly around forcing fights around objectives. Well, we'll see if they can get back to their form from the regular season. It's time for game two. And welcome onto the Rift here for the second game between Edward Gaming and Invictus Gaming. EDG are currently up a game in the best of five as IG are going to look to equalize and force a best of three. But again, we've come to some pretty interesting compositions. Both teams look very comfortable. And for you, Papa, it seems to be EDG need to get on the front foot early. It's all about that objective control page time. It's all about playing to your win condition. Sieging, definitely not a win condition for EDG. They have good turret dive if they get tanky enough, but that's going to require some sort of snowball. So when the 2v2 lane will be wonderful, but the most uh, manageable early game win condition is getting a monopolization of the dragons and working towards Baron control. That's where EDG fight best, is around objectives. And IG, they have ranged pushing options, they have good turret damage, but they have good wave clear as well. So it's going to be a lot on clear love, to be honest. His Rek'Sai in game five against World Elite was one of the main reasons, alongside, of course, Pawn's heroic return to the lineup on Cassidy. It was ganking that mid lane, getting the Rek'Sai and the Cassidy snowballed. I mean, Rek'Sai had 3,000 health about 20 minutes into that game. He was unkillable, baited a lot of engages and aggression from World Elite. It's all on Clear Love's plate, but you can see from his KDA and just the win rate that he's been really on this season. Yeah, and I think Rek'Sai has one of, been one of his standout champions as well. His Nunu's been great, but Rek'Sai and Lee Sin might be his two big ones here. As we do have Koro starting the follow here with Clear Love into the jungle depth, looking to freeze the top side there as well. I believe EDG spotted IG out, but still decided they'd rather be in the top lane. So peculiar to see the lane swaps that come through from EDG. They're often happy to swap Urgot lanes away from what on paper is very favorable lane map, main shops. Maybe they just know more than I do, but they don't necessarily have a smite top lane that you might want to navigate away from an early laning phase. Mako poking in his head. We've seen him steal away camps. Famously, of course, Dark Matter Vega was able to take away uh, the Gromp level one in a previous series, but both the supports going for a bit of a walk. Yeah, he stole a red buff on Annie as well against Paul Loveling, who I don't think will live that one down for quite a while. So has definitely been very sneaky on his supports, but Nautilus, unfortunately, not very many good steal options there. As we move into the mid lane now, Pawn versus Rookie. Be curious to track the max here for Pawn, especially how many points does he need in the Nautilus here before he feels comfortable? And you need that Force Pulse max as fast as possible to have any hope of counter pushing this wave against Orianna. Has those auto attacks with ramping damage. Going to see a lot of trades coming through from Rookie. Looking for a much better laning phase this time, of course, as he was completely dictated to by Pawn's yeah. LeBlanc. And another flask here for Pawn. I wonder, I mean, I think both the champions he played, especially Kassadin in this matchup, lean themselves toward a flask. But if he does it for a third time in a row on a different champion, we might just learn something about Pawn's playstyle there. As Kakao is rotating through with the tie. Kid and Kitty's already on top of the turret. Mako and Koro do not have very many good options here, and they're going to get dope. Mako, only level one, gets struck by Equilibriums, and Kitty's taking the turret damage, gives first blood to Kid. You're not even sure what he had skilled. Koro's in a lot of trouble. Yeah, now he's getting dope as well. Exhaust coming down. Does find the hot flashes away. Clear up in the area as well, I think, trying to make the difference but still getting chased away clear love is down here but he's only got the double buffs and can't do anything another kill goes over this time to aurelia they are positioning for a third tower dive that's probably biting off a little bit more than they can chew but already a big advantage ig just edg just entering lane far too early against the four men jungle follow and it's just a poor execution of the jungle follow you'd have to say absolutely and we've seen this a couple of times where teams get to that lane too early and just get themselves dove Koro now he has to use his teleport already the Doran's blade not much help there in that situation despite all the good cost efficient stats now Deft even going to meet the tie as the waves pushing in towards him it will reset now and tie will start laning Urgot fine in this situation but IG already two kills and a thousand gold ahead the only way we can decipher 
this insistence on lane swapping Urgot is that perhaps it's the identification of the very poor early lane for a fast swap. Good flash burnt there by Clear the Kakao coming in as well. Rex are going to have to be careful. Pornos are now under threat as well. Kakao doing good damage. That'll force the flash away and Kakao answers pressure with pressure. That's going to force the Kassadin back. But the scary thing is we talked about the need for Clear Love to show a lot of presence early. The mid-game power advantage is always firmly in the grasp of Rek'Sai, but Kakao has already made so much impact on this map. The jungle follow, picking up the two assists, now blowing the flash in the mid lane. Sejuani out jungling a Rek'Sai early, bodes very well for Invictus Gaming. Yeah, it says a lot when Mako's here in the mid lane, clearing creeps for clear love as Pawn has been forced back. Does go back and get a blasting word, but Kakao back on an early dragon here. It's not four minutes, but IG will join him and they'll take the first one away once again. It's very clear when you're talking about the fact that these are the win conditions for EDG being executed by IG, that this first five minutes has just been optimal by Invictus Gaming. Coming back to the Urgot, you feel like maybe he's looking to counter swap early after a tier, maybe avoid the level one and two where we do see this surprising Callistus taking over the lane and maybe pushing Urgot into a situation where he's not able to trade. It's not what we expect out of Urgot, maybe it's just kind of a, an explanation of his lane bullying is after a certain item spike or with enough mana, which might be difficult to navigate at level one. But it's been consistent enough that this seems to be EDG's judgment of Urgot's laning phase. Yeah, and they're still pushing the turret, actually. So they're going to try and do damage to the top side of the map. Kekau also continuing to clear jungle. Actually saved his smite on the dragon. Didn't use it because he wanted to get back into his jungle and keep farming away. And honestly, after the early game they've had, EDG weren't going anywhere near that dragon. I mean, Clear Love struggled for jungle presence the early game yesterday, last, last time around. It's going to be the same situation here. Uh, on, on the Rex side, needs to make something happen. You can already see the port coming back from death. It's going to be definitely the tier being picked up. Will it be the return to standard lanes from this minimap? The answer is yes. Yeah, he's got a pickaxe now as well, and that's a very strong spike for Urgot early on. Callista, we've talked about it, doesn't really itemize that well towards her two key items. Sure, once she gets there, looks great, but right now, it's a very clever swap from EDG, and if they can make the difference in the bottom side, they can start to claw back some of the disadvantage They've that's already been set upon them in the, set upon them in the first five minutes. And look, it's time for Kid's shopping trip anyway, so he could opt to maybe force the tie out of lane and return to the lane swap situation, but he might look to just 2v2 with the BF, so there is the potential for the all-in trade. Gonna have to wait and see what spell he's maxing. I believe it is the Ren, so it's not quite the PS that does have that good AD scaling for the burst trades, but burst trading might be the best way to deal with this Urgot because in terms of sustained damage, you just can't trade with his locked on acid hunters. Yeah, and still tracking pawn there as well. Speaking of skill maxes, two points in the force pulse now and two in the null sphere. I wonder where he'll go for that seventh point. Maybe just doing a bit of alternating between them, wants to make sure he bounces them because again, we've noted that he does need both here to navigate the lane, but only behind by about five, six CS. Not too bad right now, although running a bit low on mana as Rookie starting to get more aggressive with his zoning. Yeah, Rookie managed to zone him away from the cannon creep. Got the experience, but didn't get the CS and that ability. You max Null Sphere until you feel, uh, right, until the pressure kind of elapses, until you start to get a little bit of lane presence, then you max the Force Pulse. So you can see that he's feeling relatively pressured, but if he has to put in more points than just the two, definitely going to affect his skill order and that maxing out of the Force Pulse by level nine. Yep, back down the bottom. No death gets nailed by a Pierce, but going to clean some creeps away. Actually, a good CS lead. Death got a lot of free time in the top side of the map. I get probably because of the dive that happened as Kakao will find Clear Love here in the jungle. Going to start chasing him down. He'll immediately tunnel out of the way and take out a ward. Kakao, again on Sejuani. It's a weird champion to see this on, but good early pressure already. I missed the result of the first eight minutes that he feels he's strong enough to contest a Rek'Sai over just the Scuttle Crab, over the smallest of advantages. But when you have comprehensively out-jungled someone and have that pressure in the middle and you have the Orianna that has all the lane control over the Kassadin. These are the win conditions we expected IG to be able to act upon in game one that they kind of fell away as the game went on. You have to say that they've kind of left that behind and they're back on the train and trying to force Clear Love to react to the pressure from Kakao. And Clear Love going to donate over the blue buff. Does hit level six though, will Rek'Sai as Clear Love going to go back home to shop. We've got blue buffs up now for both mid laners, and we're starting to see the Force Pulse get maxed now after just the two points in the Null Sphere for Cassidy. And so Pawn can start fighting back in the lane, but Rookie's still wanting to zone him out. Got a good lead. He's kick out on the bottom, throws the ulti, gets Mako with a slow, but he dredge lines out from under the tornado, out to safety. Very well played by Nautilus. Yeah, excellent Nautilus mechanics, despite the fact that he's only played one other game. 
Oh. Clear that's up top. Yeah, in the top lane, the tie gonna get taken out here. Clear that's gonna move in. Actually takes the kill away from Koro, who sets it up wonderfully. But that was a massive gank on two sides of the rift. Of course, I thought that. Clear Love was porting down bottom to provide a bit of assistance for EDG, but no, he was looking for the aggressive move up top. EDG get the successful gank, IG waste their resources, and we start to reset in terms of pressure. Suddenly, EDG able to enact this freeze in the bottom. Yeah, EDG gonna hold the wave here. Def will clear it away nicely with Mako. Helping out just a bit here as Dragon is back in a minute 50. So we'll see if IG can get those two Dragons again and set themselves up for that nice lead that they've already started. Honestly, still a thousand gold ahead. No turrets done quite yet. Pressure starting to mount back as we pop back into the mid lane and Pawn is a sheen on his Kassadin. He does have a sheen. I have no words to describe the sheen purchase. Definitely hasn't been the standard build. It's been all about the Rod of Ages into the Athenes and the Zonias. Those are the three core items. Just a hopping mad 40% CDR, 1.2 second Rift Walks in the late game. Kid able to push in this lane, even without the max on the PS, just because, again, the BF Sword gives him enough AD to start to try to stop the freeze. But it's certainly much towards EG's turret. And the moment that Mako ping six, we're talking about Wombo initiation potential from the Urgot Nautilus. Yeah, and you can sell EDG's bottom lane, look to play a bit more aggressively, lock down either of the fairly squishy champions in bottom lane and try and take over the game that way. Pawn, though, I have to say on the cast today, if I'm going to trust anyone with something new, it's going to be Pawn. Certainly does like to mix it up from time to time, usually with champions, but this time on a trademark cast, I'm going to mix up the build as well. I mean, it helps with his last hitting under turret, you could say. Of course, we just pop that nether blade and do quite a lot of damage, but nether blade and the rework on that ability is one of the reasons why Kastin became so much more popular is that his CSing under turret got a lot better. So what the Sheen provides in this particular section range, it's hard to say. Of course, the blasting one doesn't build into the Lich Bane rush. Clear love. Yeah, clear love. Sorry, coming in. Great ulti there from Rookie. Disengages, but Pawn still going in. Just never stops chasing, and he gets the kill. And the Pawn, the, the Sheen trade damage was definitely relevant for the burst in this situation. Maybe just a way to get an earlier power spike in terms of damage. Usually we have to wait for Kassin to hit that level 11, 16, get the mana stacking going down, but just the Sheen, the physical damage, doing a lot of work. Yeah, and the bad news in the bottom side for IG. Kakao is in the bottom side, but Def to make have already backed away, and EDG are coming for the top lane dive now as well. Clearlove's already in there. Koro tanking up the turret. Pawn going to chase him down to tie. Can't get away from anything, and the Mega now going to get frozen. A good off from Kakao gets the trade kill, but EGD again starting to get control of the game. Yeah, 101 now is Cassidy. Only 10 CS behind, but has those score involvements to keep this gold lead very, very even. The Sheen does physical damage, so of course the Chalice Rush, which has now been the max from Rookie, not going to negate the damage coming through. It's just earlier damage power spikes than you'd expect, and it seems to be really exploited well by all this skirmishing, which looks to continue. Yeah, I mean, we talked about EDG wanting to be aggressive. Rookie going to get the revisit as he gets slowed by the smite, knocked up again, and Pawn, you just can't get away. Rookie goes down to clear love this this time and that's good news for EDG because Dragon's also back. But it's crazy that they're able to play around this different item power spike. You so expect a Cassidy to play passively, be farming up to his Rod of Ages, not DPSing down and roaming at 12 minutes into the game. But this is why Pawn needs to be talked about in the same breath as the top mid laners in the world. Recognize the situation, how it's going to be a struggle against Orianna. Does something completely different. And IG in general just don't know to play around the much higher burst damage from Pawn. And Pawn going to go in on to kick out Kid and Kitties are here though as well. Tornado will knock him up. He doesn't have the hop back. Ulti back there from Kitties as well. Telbot comes in at unnecessary and Kid's gonna get himself a kill. Okay, so they do actually make him pay for all his over aggression and staying factor in the mid. It's still gonna be the Rod of Ages coming through. Gonna be a bit of a delayed timing. So Ty is getting to that part of the lane where Aurelia really beats on now. Yeah, Koro coming in, gonna get some abilities through. Does have his ulti, but doesn't plug him right into the rock face there. Kid and Kitty's gonna push in with Pawn Ab uh, Rookie Absent, sorry. Still able to get the turret. I guess Pawn Absent too after that pressure, getting him getting him the kill. IG get the first turret. They may be in position to pick up a second dragon, and all of a sudden, IG starting to answer back. A smart rotation from IG. They were fighting a freeze from Urgok. Had to respect the potential of the the lock-on when you're that overextended in the lane. So this rotates to mid and picked up the mid turret, punished Cassidy for overstaying. So the rotations have actually been the smart moves here from IG, and it's been the ganking and the skirmishing by EDG. Feels like roles have reversed a little bit from game one, but smart play from IG. EDG, though, do get the Scuttle Crab, so a bit of exclusive vision around the Dragon for the next 45 seconds or so. Rookie with his Athens almost completed, got the two components there. 
going to move in and take away the blue buff for himself. Kakao, not quite in the area to help him out, but Rookie more than capable of soloing it right now. And Pawn again, maybe looks to pick his up as well. But IG on the right side for Dragon if they want to go for it. But IG, honestly, they pulled the trigger for early Dragons in both games so far in the series, but really have not aggressively followed up on the second. Yeah, that's what you have to feel. They did have 2-0 to zero in the first game. You can see Sejuani is positioned towards bottom. If she does Artig Assault over, will find Maker. Yeah, actually does there. And now Def realizes he's in trouble. Flashes the ulti once more there as Def gets a bit of poke back and forth. Quite strong on the Urgot, actually, with the Man Immune plus the Brutalizer. But that might give IG just enough room to take away their second dragon. It feels like every time Def gets his flash up, there's the Artig Assault into the Glacial Prison, forcing him to flash defensively and relieving pressure from Kid in terms of the 2v2 lane, let alone this dragon. Suddenly so much more risky than Contest Dragon when Death doesn't have that flash available on Urgot on a short-range carry, and they happily take it away. Yeah, good stuff from IG. They'll get go two dragons up again here as Clearlove takes away the Raptor. Rookie tries to steal it away, but is unsuccessful in that particular venture. Death continuing to take creeps away here again. A good lead. In fact, Jana has to be careful. Death got the lock on Kitties. Might just get sold out here. Damage coming through. Needs one more Q, but the fates for fall from call from kids sorry saves him at just the last second the fates call popping the projectile of course going untargetable feels like flash from a few years ago but still very very effective in that situation good communication between the bottom laners depth charge available but not looking for anything aggressive Koro finally finds a little bit of individual time and Zatai feels pressured enough to not enter lane. Yeah, knows that Pawn and Clearlove have left to looking for the gank in the top lane once Fall more. Fool me once. Yeah, we talk about Clearlove like in the over gank lane. Zatai not falling for the trick a second time there. But Pawn powering up. Must be close to that Rod of Ages gold now as well. Koro even getting good damage onto the turret. Doesn't quite take it away, but we'll go back to spend a bit of money for himself. Again, EDG. Oh, no, Mako now getting caught in transition. Kakao knocks him out. Oriana Ball coming in. A great flash, so we'll secure Nautilus's safety and IG instead get a ward. i just really been enamored by this game so far, Pastry Time. Teams understanding win conditions and then playing around the expectations of the enemy team. You see a Cassidy versus Oriana doesn't have the wave clear, doesn't have necessary the wave control to be able to stay in lane very much. So he picks up a sheen, picks up a kill, then roams top and has been looking for a lot of roam burst trades. Just so much earlier than you'd expect from the Cassidy, who traditionally has had that very passive laning phase. Understanding that Urga is going to win this 2v2 matchup even after the lane swap, we see Kakao coming to bot lane and a successful gank is one where Deft has to use his flash defensively and no longer has the same solo kill onto Kalista than he would have in a normal laning phase. Yes. Double pink wards, pretty unfortunate in that situation. Not the best use of 200 gold, but both these teams are, are thinking on higher levels of strategy. This is the playoffs and both teams showing it with their performances in the first 17 minutes. Possibly, oh, Cora going in there. Good ulti there onto Zatai. Locks Pawn. him up as well on Pawn. Of course, he's here in the top side. And Zatai, you can try and run, but it's going to be quite a long journey. Ward goes down to spot him off. Pawn blinks in once again and just takes another kill. As Zatai was trying to buy enough time for the Mininar transformation to potentially, with the lower base stats, get a trade kill. No hope of that against a Cassidy that's already hit level 11 and Zatai. His frustration is showing. Yeah, it looks not particularly happy with the situation. Starting to get camped just by uh, Cassidy at this point. Didn't even need clear love for that next little player. As Koro also gets himself the turret and gives his team a bit of gold. Mako finds Kakao on the bottom side. Death will swap him in now as well. Kidding Kitties are getting in a good ulti from Kakao. Locks him up for a second, but the Arctic Assault does not make it through the thick wall. EDG will keep chasing in. A good disengage from Kitties might keep them safe, but Rookie goes down in transition to Pawn and EDG. They're starting to really mount pressure here as Koro hops over the side. Gonna look for the dive. Death's already started it. Fates call used defensively to knock Koro back away. That should keep them safe, but Pawn chasing in does not overcommit, but EDG get two kills and possibly more. Amazing that Kitties didn't even have to use his flash thanks to the Fates call, but the pathing from EDG, the contest, of course, the Urgot's gonna be so much and more innately strong than the Callista in a trade like that. Callista's gone for laning items. Just the Bloodthirster and the Berserker Grease. No Hurricane to look for a potential rent set and punish and it looked like IG just need to use that glacial prison defensively and go back they looked for the to bite off more than they could chew and EDG take another advantage and what is now a 2,000 gold lead for them and Koro and Pawn already making their way back to the top Zatai does back away aggressively though I think realizes what's going on whenever Cassidy's missing it seems like Zatai is the one that has to be afraid Pawn is recalling now though so we'll be okay for now but Dev gets the turret in the bottom side of the map and just gets away with a free one there Queer Love has been enacting Plan tilt Zatai for many years, Pastry Time, on multiple teams. 
They're trying to do it again. Credit to the Zatai has been sniffing it out a few times. But that's the funny thing is that Kakao shows up in the bottom lane in an advantageous matchup for EDG. Forces the fla defensive flash to come through. Suddenly, Urgot has to play defensive. Suddenly, Kid gets a lane. We've already mentioned Aurelia naturally will beat Nara in the laning matchup. So EDG always send multiple resources up there. I guess the big question we'll find out is that a Nara with a bit of extra pressure, with more items thanks to the pressure from the team, will that be more effective than a Callista who's been opened up resources themselves? Well, we might have to find out soon as Dragon is back in a minute 20 and Baron is up for the first time in the game in about five seconds' time. Pawn has gone back. Cool and Boots Fiendish Codex for his next purchases there. So Pawn is definitely going a little bit off the deep end here in today's build. So he's having a look at terms of his CDR. Sitting on 27.5%, so very close to 40% when he does pick up the blue buff. 40% CDR, some sort of Athenes has usually been the build. Probably still going to be the Athenes here, but CDR boots, more roaming, I have to say. Yeah, I mean, again, aggressive as far as the build goes, a bit different. I wonder what that Ching will become, if anything. Might have even just have been a mid-game item. Would be a stroke of genius if that was the case here for Pawn. Again, have to trust him on Cassidy and Bilton. We looked down the bottom for Deft as well. He's already got two and a half offensive items. Okay, still needs the transformation on his man immune, but last whisper done. He's kept a healthy 40 or 50 CS lead in that bottom side of the map. I mean, it's to be expected, this is definitely the matchup that's come through. Even with the lane top, the fact that they entered lane fairly even, able to just freeze the lane, and whenever the freeze happens, Callista has to leave lane. One time that was super successful when they roamed mid and took that turret from Pawn. But now when she's trying to come bottom, just getting consistently zoned, and there's just nothing Janna can do. No sustain available on Janna. Honestly, no sustain really matches up to Urgot, other than everyone's favorite 2011 counterpick, Soraka, which... You know, if we keep seeing Urgot, might need to come back into the meta. Once Upon a Time was one of the best Urgot lanes as well, but sadly, that he no longer but works the, the same way. Against Urgot, of course, used oh, to yeah. give a big burst of heal and armor, which meant that the lock-on trays didn't do much. Now the armor's not there, but it's so much consistent healing on such a short cooldown that it's still very effective I mean, against e Urgot. EDG is shredding through this dragon, by the way. Deft even turns around, maybe looks for initiation. Pawn's already on top of Kitties, who takes a massive chunk of damage from Catherine and IG. Cannot fight, just being zoned by Pawn at this stage, and EDG casually claim their first dragon. And it's on the, for the objective swap here. Ko is pushing the minion wave, but Oriana should react. They want to swap turrets after picking up the dragon. This is a good swap for EDG there, if they can get the mid turret as well. Maybe even look for a dive. The Tide does have his teleport and takes out the top turret, so can be there at a moment's notice. EDG certainly over shoes in the siege, flashing initiate onto Rookie. Who comes in as well, but the ult is massive there for the disengage as they both move in, but Pawn's still diving in. Deft actually in the back going on to Rookie, but can't quite finish him off. Now 5v4 here, good boomerang to get a couple of slows. Rookie there will get back away. It's sort of a 4v4 right now, but EDG have to back away. IG might even keep pushing. Deft was in a hopelessly poor position. Kakao re-initiates, but he's on his own. Hyper-aggressive there for Kakao, forced to flash away. Now Pawn feels comfortable to re-engage, gets the first kill, has to get out those clear that dies back in, but Korra, massive now royalty is casted and gets a double. So Ty's gonna get kited to death here as well on Aurelia a clear love gets the other kill I thought Deft had gone too far but EDG answered with a 3-1 trade and I guess we have to remember is that Deft is not the only source of consistent damage even Rek'Sai pumping out the damage the hyper procs coming through from Nah. Kassadin has so much consistent damage especially with a Sheen getting that Sheen trade on consistently in a fight now that he basically procs it whenever it's available Deft out of the lineup definitely doesn't take away from the damage on EDG compared to a standard AD carry lineup no, and as always with Deft, whatever any carry champion he plays, he seems to be able to eke out more damage than anyone else. No exception here on his Urgot either. But if we want to talk about like magnitude of carry potential, I think Cassidy's probably the scariest member on EDG. And again, this Sheen has just come for so much mid-gear damage. So when EDG wanted to fight aggressively with Clear Love Snowball Warmogs, with the Urgot that can be strong and initiate fights, they've just looked wonderful with some weird scaling that have somehow managed to dance their way around. I just love the fact that he just picks up a Sheen. No rush to turn it into another item. Speaking of rush, Korra wants to get out, uh, but... Uh, no ulti here. It's going to make it tricky. Kid hopping around the wall up there. Korra going to live for a while in Megan Arfon, but Kid will get the kill with Ren. They're definitely punishing that situation, but this is the EDG way. They've already pinged onto Baron. They're already on top of it as well. They have the pink wards down on everything. Baron getting shredded now as the tie. He is in the area. Rookie there as well with his ultimate available. They might be able to make something of it. The tie already getting grabbed by the dredge line. Knocked up 
up by the Nort and the Rek'Sai there coming through, and Rookie goes back in. Okay, they don't give away the Baron, but EDG just get the pick off. Honestly, they get a bit of a reprieve there, EDG, because you could just see the world's biggest shockwave coming out from Rookie with the magic resist debuff coming through from the Baron. Would have been huge damage, but the fight continues. Yeah, Kikau's been slowed. They're going to get swapped back as well by Jeff, who's now in the front line going on to Kitty's pawn. Picks him off. It's Kakao still taking damage here from Clear Love Mercy. Shockwave lands into Peel for Kakao, but Jeff unrelenting in his pressure takes out Rookie Koro. Hopping in with the home guard boots as well, going in. And EDG waited just enough to get themselves four kills on their back straight onto Baron. The Cassidy has once again come up trumps, just carried them into the semi-finals in that big fifth game victory. And Pawn's got his carry boots on again. The Sheen is just a masterstroke. And you've noticed that in both those games, it's Rek'Sai Kasten. The big thing to consider there is you've got so many flexible options. Rek'Sai is such a great side wave ganker. Game. So we saw the gangster come through, and that's the surrender. Yeah, that was Kuro ulting the wall there for a good reason. IG have tapped the mat and surrendered here in the second game to give EDG a 2-0 lead. And Pawn just kind of relaxes back and said, yeah, Sheen was pretty good. And how often do you surrender against an Urgot team when you're not really far behind in the mid game? You always look to the late game and think, okay, Callista might outscale, but you're not going to outscale the Cassidy. And that's the big statement. I think Cassidy, it's come back. It's full circle again, page time. You need to start banning this Cassidy because Pawn's just too damn good. Yeah, and clearly up there, a bit of a smirk. We saw the tie earlier, looking very unhappy, slumping forward on his desk there over his keyboard. EDG again, they give away two dragons and then seem to find a way for the first, deny the third away from IG. And it seems like we hit 15, 20 minutes into a game and all of a sudden IG forget how to win. And Pawn goes for just the most ironic situation of lose lane win game in this particular game. Rek'Sai's ganking and, and the Rek'Sai Cassidy duo is crazy. Rek'Sai, Cassidy, sorry, Rek'Sai goes in, has the uncleansable CC. They roam up to the top lane, they get the kills, but you know what's the it, most intelligent adaptation is that, of course, Rek'Sai has the defensive tunnels all the way around mid, mid, mid lane. If there's not multiple members sent mid, can just happily void rush to the mid and relieve pressure and clear waves. And even though that turret da went down to a smart rotation from Callista into the mid lane when Pawn was finally caught out, it meant for nothing because every lane had to respect the power of the Cassidy. And now I think IG do. It needs to be a ban for game three. Yeah, we'll have to see how it goes. Uh, another carry duo there between clear level and Pawn puts EDG up match point for three straight games. IG have a lot to fight for and we'll see how much fighting they can do straight after the break.